Hello and welcome to the Helios blog. My name is Helios. Today we're going to talk about Sheryl Sandberg. I'll bet you've never heard of Sheryl Sandberg. Guess what? That will change today. She is the famous strong independent COO of Facebook. She will go down in infamy as the person who revealed hypergamy to the masses. Oops. Let's get on with it, shall we? Enjoying my content? Check out my blog at heliosblog.com. On YouTube, you can support me by liking and subscribing. I'm also on Spotify if you prefer a podcast. If you're interested in my books, The Strategist's Guide to Seduction and Quotes to Live By, they're available on Amazon. In addition, you can follow me on Patreon at The Helios Blog for exclusive content. On with the show. The infamous quote. The quote we will be discussing today comes from the book Lean in, women work in the will to lead. It's a doozy, I hope you're ready. When looking for a life partner, my advice to women is to date all of them. The bad boys, the cool boys, the commitment phobic boys, the crazy boys. But do not marry them. The things that make the bad boys sexy do not make them good husbands. When it comes time to settle down, find someone who wants an equal partner. Someone who thinks women should be smart, opinionated and ambitious. Someone who values fairness and expects, or even better, wants to do his share in the home. These men exist, and trust me, over time, nothing is sexier. Oh lord, so much to break down. Let's get to work. The quote, translated from womanese into English. This quote is full of information to unpack. Read what it is really saying and try to understand how insidious this message is. Okay. So here's womanese. When looking for a life partner, my advice to women is to date all of them. Bad boys, cool boys, commitment phobic, whatever. English. When you're young, date only alpha studs. Okay, back to womanese. The things that make the bad boys sexy do not make them good husbands. English. Alphas are for sport fucking, betas are for resource extraction. Back to womanese. When it comes time to settle down, find someone who wants to be an equal partner. Here's English. When you're at the end of your strong independent phase and starting your lady phase, the wall, or around age 30, find a beta slave NPC or loser man. Back to womanese. Someone who thinks women should be smart, opinionated, and ambitious. This is now back to English. Someone who worships women and puts women before himself in all aspects. Womanese. Someone who values fairness and expects, or even better, wants to do his share in the home. English. Someone who's willing to do anything you say, no matter how degrading. Womanese. These men exist, and trust me, over time nothing is sexier. English. Your beta slave NPC safety net exists, and you will not be attracted to the men in this category, though you can pretend with platitudes like this to keep them around. Yes, I'm also amazed at how ridiculous this is. It's like watching a train wreck happen in front of your very eyes. Hypergamy explained. As Cheryl so kindly explained in her quote, women are hypergamous. They seek the absolute best men when they're in their sexual prime, and they seek a safety net when they're no longer competitive. Often, they seek the safety net when they're no longer able to tempt the alphas they initially fucked into sticking around. Of course, women are never happy with the men they settle for, and even when they have children with them, wonder what could have been. Another sad reality is that the children produced with a beta often turn out to be betas themselves, perpetuating the safety net that women have. Effectively, betas are the bred cattle of the human race, to be used and discarded in order to serve women's hypergamous imperative. Alpha fucks versus beta bucks. Cheryl said it best. Take it from the mouth of a strong, independent woman herself, here's what women want. Number one, bad boys. Number two, cool boys. Number three, commitment phobic boys. Number four, crazy boys. You need to embody the qualities of at least one of these archetypes to be sexually attractive to women. Here is who you don't want to be. Again, taken from Cheryl's own mouth. Thank you, Cheryl. Number one, an equal partner. Number two, someone who thinks women should be smart, opinionated and ambitious, also known as masculine women. Number three, someone who values fairness and does their fair share in the home, chore play. All of those qualities will signal to your woman that you're a beta slave. 
You want to be the guy who fucks, not the guy who gets used, ordered around, and discarded when they're no longer useful. Hypergamy isn't hidden anymore. The quote that Cheryl said marks the beginning of open hypergamy. This is the concept that women are no longer hiding their sexual strategy from men anymore. Women feel they have such a good position, and they do, that they can gloat about it. It is your choice whether you want to be the man in the first part of the quote, a sexy alpha stud, or the man in the second part of the quote, a beta slave useful only for what he provides and sexually useless. You need to wake up. Once you realize the raw deal you're getting from women in marriage or serious relationships, you won't be inclined to ever enter into you won't be inclined to ever enter into one. Funnily enough, commitment phobic is one of the very qualities that women find attractive. Lucky you. Don't be her safety net. I was implying this before, but I'll state it openly now. Do not ever agree to be a woman's safety net. You will not be considered sexy. You will be considered a tool. You are not a man to a woman if you put yourself in this position. You are a slave who serves at the behest of the matriarchy. You can choose to stay in your mental prison or break free and be happy. You will be miserable as her safety net. I guarantee it. You will feel used. You will be unappreciated. Don't say I didn't warn you. Marriage as the end game of the feminine imperative. Marriage is the end game of the feminine imperative. In the West, if you get married, the girl has you totally by the balls. She can control your sex drive as well as your resources. It inevitably leads to the destruction of your masculine essence as she grinds you down over time. Unless you want to become a husk of your formal self, do not allow yourself to submit to her endgame. You need to formulate a counter strategy and bring her into your endgame instead. Hold frame and stay strong to what you want as opposed to what the feminine imperative says you should do. Will you be a free pariah or Sandberg's praise slave? As I've said in previous articles, you yourself have a choice to make. I'm going against the wishes of the feminine imperative. And in doing so, you will inevitably become a pariah. You will be free from slavery of the feminine imperative, however, and will actually have the opportunity to live a good life. You could choose to be one of Cheryl's slaves, though. You will live a life of quiet misery, but women all around you will praise you for your sacrifice, while snickering that they could have their cake and eat it too. Non-monogamy as a solution to Sandbergism. If you want to prevent yourself from being Sandberged, being used as a safety net when the woman is done fucking alphas, you have to be non-monogamous. With a roster of women, you are never beholden to any individual for sex. As a result, no girl can control you through the throttling of sex. Since you're not able to be controlled, you will fall firmly into the alpha category, and the beta torture will not happen to you. Conclusion As you can see, Sandberg exposed female hypergamy in her book. She obviously masked the truth by saying that nothing is sexier than betas. We can clearly tell by the actions of women everywhere that they are not sexually attracted to betas and in fact use them for resource extraction. If they did find them truly attractive, they would choose beta men over alphas in their sexual prime, yet they never do. Be smart. Listen to women's actions and not their words.